Hey guys, those are Communications, and welcome to another review, this time of a film sent to me by Adam Watson, a 2009 film called Necromentia. Um, and I'm just going to say this was interesting. It wasn't very good, but it was interesting. There are some things about it I liked. Uh, the, there's the creature design of this this monster right here, which reminded me a lot of the Nemesis from Resident Evil, but it was really well done, really great practical effects. There's some decent bits of gore. The concept is kind of intriguing, but it just seriously lacks an execution. It's about as well handled, it's about as well executed as, I don't know, uh, chopping up a piece of meat with a meat cleaver. It's just as messy and just as it just is fragmented. I, it's, it's just I, I. After this movie was over, I was like, "What the fuck? What the fuck was this? What did I watch?" And there was a lot of other moments too where I was like, "This is stupid," and there just it it didn't you didn't you didn't care about anybody in this movie, so that really hurt the film. But I understand what they're trying to do. It's like it's hell. People end up in the hell dimension. You don't need to give a shit about them. They're evil. I understand that. I do. I get it. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't know. It would have helped if I had one character that I actually cared about in this film because at the end of the day, I don't give a shit. It's like a kind of like a shittier version of Hellraiser. <laughs> a shitty Hellraiser. Um, if I want to watch something to do with some realm that people get tortured in, I'll just watch fucking Hellraiser. But the director, actually, he's pretty, he actually knows what he's doing, Perry Teo. Um, the cinematography by Darren Meyer I thought was pretty good. Uh, the editing by Damien Drago, which is a hell of a name, is actually pretty, it's, it's kind of confusing at moments, but it had, but it was, but there were some moments I thought was pretty clever. I thought, for the most part, their image of what hell looked like, looks like, was actually pretty eerie and creepy and effectively chilling. Um, definitely is a place you don't want to be, uh, but the film just, it's barely even a movie, it, it's, it's 82, 82 minutes long, 83 minutes, is about an hour and 16 minutes long, and it, but what I, what I mean by barely even a movie, it's not even that long, not just because of the running time, because the film itself is, it feels like three different stories that are just, glued together haphazardly. It's just like, just take a bunch of duct tape, take three stories and duct tape them together and call it a fucking day. It, it's, it, it definitely does feel like that. And then I can see why some people saw this movie and were like, what the fuck happened? I'm confused. All I know is some girl died and some shit, whatever the fuck happened, I don't know. And, um, so yeah, um, I'm glad. I'm, I thank you, Adam, for sending this to me. I mean, it was interesting. It's. I would ultimately say it's not a film I'd probably ever watch again. Um, I. But it, it's one of those movies that. I honestly can't really say that it's one of the shittiest movies I've ever seen because it did have some effectively chilling imagery images in it. There were some moments that definitely made me cringe and made me want to, you know, definitely made me creeped out. And some of them were just because it was just. Which is gross, uh, but you know, uh, another moment I just thought were just stupid, which I'll get into. Uh, the fucking what is it? The laughing whatever pig fucking song, stupid fucking Mr. Skinny, who's not skinny at all. He's a fat fuck with a pig mask who speaks like a fucking cartoon character. Yeah, I'm not making this shit up. I'm actually gonna put the clip, the link to the clip in in the description below here, so you can see for yourself. The, the horror that is Mr. Skinny. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to go through the cat. The director is Perry Teo. He also helped write the film along with Stephanie Joyce. Uh, the, the, the film stars Leighton Matthews as Morbius. No relation to Morbius from Marvel Comics. No relation to Spider-Man's vampire villain. Uh, when, I, when I heard the name Morbius, I'm like, oh my god, it's Morbius! <laughs> Uh, not the same Morbius. Chad Grimes plays Travis. Santiago Craig plays Hagen. Ziliana Rivera plays Elizabeth. Zach Coomer plays Thomas. And Nathan Ginn plays Mr. Skinny. Now, Travis, he looks like Seth Rollins. 
Seth Rollins, or, or I mean, he looks more like Seth Rollins as he did, than he does Rob Zombie, but there's some moments where he reminded me of Rob Zombie. Yeah, he looks like Seth Rollins. And I'm like, great, Seth Rollins is in this fucking movie. Can I just curb stomp him in the head and get this shit over with? Don't I have to fucking watch this fucking guy? And he's a terrible actor, too. His performance is awful. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty bad. His performance is pretty bad. It is pretty awful. But there are some moments where it was okay. But for the most part, it was just bad. I honestly thought the guy who played uh, Hagen, Santiago Craig, was the best actor out of the entire film. But pretty much all he did is remind me of uh, Brecken Meyer. He even sounded like Brecken Meyer. But anyway, um, here's the gist of the plot because I just saw this movie and I still haven't been able to honestly figure it out. And if, if, I, if I fucking try to just go off the top of my head, I just confuse everybody. Anyway, uh, Travis cared, played, played by Chad Grimes. He cares for his mentally disabled younger brother and works as a torturer for hire. Yeah, he works as a guy who just tortures people for money. So right off the bat, you don't give a fuck about this guy. But you don't really know about any of this shit until a lot later because the movie opens up with Hagen get, ending up in this realm or whatever and this monster getting ready to go after him. And then we cut to him and he's kept his woman his girlfriend elizabeth alive not really hasn't kept her alive but he just kept her corpse because she said one thing to him that oh if i ever die i'll come back and so he's he, he's a dumbass so he decides oh I, I think she's gonna come back so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep her her corpse for some reason he, he fucks her you don't actually see it so there's no necromantic stuff going on here thank god but you do kind of hear him smacking lips with her which is really disgusting and made me want to throw up but I'm not I mean it has necro in it come on so you know there's gonna be some fucking necromance there's necromancy in this but I, I could do a necromancy versus fucking necromentia oh what which are necromentia oh, oh that's actually the name of the movie necromentia I, I actually what I meant to say is like um um Necrophilia. That's what I meant to say. Necrophilia. Fucking necrophilia. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> so, he keeps her alive. He keeps trying to keep her alive. I keep saying keep her alive, but he doesn't. But I think I say that because the actress is supposed to be passed out and dead. And you can see her breathing. So that's why I fucking... <laughs> that's, that's why I think she's alive. Because the first time I see her, she's like... You can see her chest moving up and down. I'm like, come on! She's supposed to be dead. Why aren't you using a dummy? <laughs> anyway. Or if he was using a dummy, it looked like she, the dummy was breathing. Or maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. So, this guy is tr waiting for his w girlfriend's spirit to come back in her dead body. And then you have Travis shows up with his... Looking like Seth Rollins, literally. He's got the hair. He got the hairstyle. He's got the bleach blonde highlights and everything. And this is before Seth Rollins even was on WWE because this came out in 2009. So if anything, it's probably more inspired by Rob Zombie, which I'm like, that's fucking great. Rob Zombie's in this fucking movie, fantastic. All that's missing is the fucking and the fuck and the fuck and the fucker and the fuck and the fuck hole and the slut fuck and the fuck and the fucker. Uh, <laughs> all that's missing is that type of dialogue. Uh, but you don't actually see that. Don't actually hear that type of dialogue in this movie. Thank God. But anyway, so Travis comes in looking like Rob Zombie with his uh, accomplice, who you find out is was killed by Mr. Skinny later in the film. Actually, was killed by Travis's brother, who was coerced by Mr. Skinny to kill him. But yeah, whatever. And uh, so, and you find the guy is actually dead, but he's just reanimated corpse. But uh, he's wearing a t-shirt that says FUBAR on it. I'm like, yeah, FUBAR. <laughs> yeah, this movie is fucked up beyond all recognition. Anyway, so... You just have this guy, Travis, comes in, grabs Hagen, and he just starts carving this shit in his back, and pretty much... Then he ends up in this hell dimension, and this nemesis-looking monster caves his head in with a good, with a good practical effect. And then we jump cut to 11 months ago with Travis 
and he's struggling to keep food on the table and he's trying to get this guy who's the guy who's responsible for giving him money from his parents will and he wants more than three hundred dollars a month but the guy's not going to give it to him because it's the will it's your parents will I can't do anything to change your parents will I'm sorry and I'm like what really and, and so the guy you, you, you already knew you already knew in a flashback a real a, which because this film fucking shows all this shit like way early in the fucking movie for some reason the editing I said some of it is good but I said some of it is good not all of it is good because there's a decent amount of it that is pretty shitty um it's out of order for some fucking reason and uh because it's trying to keep everything a, a, a secret and trying to surprise you and there are some things that are kind of surprising in the end I wasn't expecting but get to that soon enough but yeah 11 months ago and then they introduce you to this character you're supposed to sympathize with them and I'm like why do I sympathize with this guy he cut a, he carved a fucking necromancy symbol in this guy's back he's ready to he pretty much screwed him over and then you find out that he's some torture guy that he's a guy who tortures people for money to in a really intense scene where he tortures this poor woman but she asks for it and she gets uh, what is it like needles or shit stuck in her teeth and gets her one of her fingers clipped off with a pair of pliers and the guy I have to admit hey the 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 look of the guy's torture shack is pretty pretty unsettling and even the even the outfit he wears he wears like a black mask and then he puts on like what looks like barbed wire over his eyes and the film doesn't like I said some this is where the editing was kind of shit was pretty shitty because you thought I thought this was just He's back in the hell dimension. This is some creature from the hell dimension. This is somebody's version of hell or some shit. But then you find out, no. That some chick actually asked for this. And then you find out that it's Travis who's underneath the mask. And then I'm wondering, how the fuck does he see with barbed wire around his eyes? But it's a whole other fucking story. And so right off the bat, you don't give a shit about this guy and what happens to him. Because he's a fucking asshole. He tortures people for money. He's a, he's a drug addict. And... The girl who's paying him to get tortured gives him this ketamine and is supposed to help him with his drug addiction to heroin. And he injects it into his neck and then he starts seeing this guy painted in fucking gray who, who starts talking to him and then trying to tell him you need, need I, I, his name is Morbius and he needs, needs his help for something. And then of course Travis is like, I'm not going to help you. And then your son is in danger, your, your brother's in danger. Because his brother, he, he watches his TV, and there's nothing on it, but he starts seeing shit. He sees Mr. Skinny, who I guess is some demon or some shit, who's some fat fuck, some fat-ass motherfucker with no shirt on, with his man boobs hanging out, and his big-ass belly, is wearing a pig mask, and he talks like he's a cartoon character. There's actually a sing-along portion of his... Of some suicide song. It's just what the whole sequence was. I was just like, what the fuck am I watching? This isn't even, this isn't scary because it's just stupid and it's silly. So it's just like, oh, 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 Mr. Skinny is like, welcome to the Mr. Skinny show. <laughs> I don't know, what the fuck am I watching? And and then the kid ends. Uh, and then of course, uh, the, the, Travis needs somebody to watch his watch his brother, and he gets some guy to watch him. We find as a guy who ends up hanging out with them and helps a, attack uh, Hagen or, before the 11 months ago, which for some reason, I didn't start out the movie for some reason. I think the movie is backwards for some reason. I don't know why. It should just be straightforward instead of backwards and doing this art, artsy take on it, which is just confusing to the audience. I, I pieced it together eventually, but it took some thinking. It definitely did. And I can see why other people saw this and were like, what the fuck happened? I don't know. And so... Let's see, Mr. Skinny shows up while, while uh, this guy's brother is being watched by this guy, Thomas, played with Zach Coomer. So Thomas is being watched by uh, the guy with the FUBAR shirt. Uh, and so 
and Mr. Skinny shows up and, and, and ends up making him kill the guy, and then Mr. Skinny hangs the kid with the guy's intestines. And then pretty much I have Morbius, I guess he's in the dark realm or some hell realm, and he's he's communicating with Travis, and he makes him believe that he took, he saved his his brother from Mr. Skinny, but of course you all know it's a bunch of, bunch of fucking bullshit, and then the, the Travis ends up through coercion from Morbius ends up getting all these necromancy books uh, he even goes in and cuts himself up for some reason but you find out that he was cutting himself up with these marks because Morbius made him do it or some shit and then he gets his necromancy books and then through the help of Mor Morbius is going to track down Hagen and if he tracks down Hagen then Morbius will give him his brother back of course that's a bunch of bullshit and then and then, of course, he, oh, he, he thinks he, he's done his, his thing. You know, he's Then we cut back, of course, 11 months ago, and then he's done his necromancy shit, and now he's got his long biker bar biker bar hairdo with the freaking highlights and the beard and looking like Rob Zombie. And he, give, he thinks that he's done his part of the deal for Morbius, but then Morbius, of course, it's all double cross. And this, this guy, this freaking guy in a gas mask and he's also wearing gray paint and he ends up sending uh, this this monster after him which this is the monster that ends up throwing his chains in in the back of uh, Travis and drags his ass to whatever to suffer in, in the hell realm and then we cut to Morbius as a human and then I'm like what the fuck what, what the fuck is going on here and they even Oh, it's the prequel. It's everything that ties in full circle. And I'm like, oh, okay. So he's a human, and you find out that Elizabeth was actually his wife, his his woman, and he had actually was having a baby with her. But and he was doing all this black magic shit and carving shit into his stomach because he wanted to make her look at him again and pay attention to him. I guess he didn't think about just talking to her instead of doing black magic. But you know, whatever. And you know, you kind of get the 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 feeling this is kind of a nice guy. He's he's the nicest guy out of everybody, surprisingly. Uh, and then you find out that Hagen and Elizabeth, well, she was cheating on him, and Hagen loved her. But of course, you find out in the beginning of the movie, you just thought it was just Elizabeth and Hagen all along. It was some twisted love story or some shit. That it was some tragic love story that she died, it was murder, and then he wanted to. She said she was gonna come back if she ever died, so he's waiting for her to come back. And you thought that he was some innocent guy, but no, you find out, no, he's not. He's an asshole, too. Because everybody's assholes in this movie. Everybody has to be an asshole. And, 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 and so, because it gives him a reason to go to hell. And so then you, have to, then you find out, you know, Hagen and Elizabeth. They were a couple, and Elizabeth loves Hagen, and she still has some feelings for the other guy, for Morbius, but she ultimately just wants him dead for some reason. So she convinces uh, Hagen to try to kill him with some plant fertilizer, and it doesn't work, and he chokes out Elizabeth before he before he passes out. or He doesn't even pass out, he just chokes out Elizabeth because the plant fertilizer doesn't kill him. And so then a decent practical effect, Hagen kills his ass by caving his head in with a chair. And then he wakes up in hell and meets this guy, the guy with the gas mask that we saw earlier in the film with the gray, gray paint and he's half naked with a gas mask. And you find out that I guess this is the, the, the incarnation, uh, the spiritual incarnation of the son or daughter that he would have had, but he killed... He killed Elizabeth, so then the, the 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 offspring ended up in hell too, and it's making a deal with him. And and Morbius is kind of an asshole too, because even even he's like, you, if you you know stay here, blah 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 blah. But it's like I want my revenge. It's like if you want your revenge, then uh, you will you will suffer or whatever. And so and then so what he does is he turns him into this thing. But then I'm like, that doesn't make any fucking sense because. Travis was ended up being tricked by you know, unless he could change shape 
unless he can change form from this thing back to this freaking whatever this guy in the back here change it back into that form with just the black eyes and he looks like Morbius but he's got gray he's got gray skin he's got black eyes because he shows up and and whenever uh, uh Travis ended up shooting himself with ketamine he shows up and influences him that way and that's how he influenced Travis has asked to even get uh hey find Hagen and it's open the doorway so he can get to the the port of the hell so Morbius can get his revenge in the first place. So why, how in the fuck is he this monster and also normal at the same time? I don't know. I don't really fucking care at the end of the day. It's probably a plot hole, but, you know, whatever. This movie kind of, this movie pretty, kind of sucked. <laughs> it really did. Um, I really don't know what to say about Necromentia, um, except, uh, there, like I said, there's some interesting visuals. And there's some creepy moments in it, but it's just, it's unfocused. It's a clusterfuck. It really could, it, it needed a better editor. It needed a better story. It needed, it needed more focus. And I think it needed more, it needed a likable character. That would have helped. I think it would have been more interesting to me if it had one character who, who for maybe uh, his daughter or his son or his wife was taken from him by this demonic spirit or something and from the hell realm and took her into the hell realm and so he ends up having to do something less than desirable to open a portal to go find to get his loved one back and fights all these demons along the way maybe people that look like this demons that look like that and it'd be really fun and it really could be a really thrilling interesting um uh, scary it's still scary because this, you, you're, you're going on the same journey as this guy is, and you don't know what's going to happen to him, so I'd be more interested in that. It would kind of be a, a, if you had a Hellraiser film where the you had a lead who ends up going into the Cenobites world, and, and, and the whole movie takes place in the Cenobites world, and the guy's trying to find some one of his, uh, find his loved one and stop them, stop Pinhead and company from killing her. And Hey, that would be kind of interesting. I think that'd be kind of a uh, fascinating, involving, interesting film. I mean, there were a lot of moments in this that were I thought were effectively chilling, and they reminded me of something I'd see in a horror, a horror video game. But it did save the movie because it's a clusterfuck. It's it's not even it's barely even a film. Like I said, it's three different stories that are just cobbled together with with fucking spit and chewing gum. And there's not very many likable, there's no likable characters in this. There's just one guy who's a little bit less of an asshole than the other people. And it's, 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 it's not, it's not my type of, I don't like watching movies like this all the time. I mean, it's, 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 it's not very fun to watch. It's not very entertaining. It's just kind of dull. And thank God it was only an hour and 16 minutes because if it was any longer than that, I would have been bored out of my goddamn mind. But I st it was interesting. I it kept my interest throughout because I was just the visuals I liked. I liked the score. That's one part of the film I did I really like was the score by Timothy Andrew Edwards. It's definitely really strange and really worked with the film. But overall, I just thought it was it was an interesting concept, an interesting idea. But it just wasn't executed very well. It was not executed very well at all. And um, that's why I really don't know what to say about Necromentia, except it was rated out of five stars. I can say there are things about it I like, so that's why I'd, I'd probably give it two. It's a poor film. It's not a movie I'd give like one and a half or one star, because I was somewhat interested in the events of the film. I, But it just it didn't help that there was nobody I really cared for, no likable characters, stupid shit like Mr. Skinny, which wasn't scary to me. I just thought it was dumb and laughable and you know but there was some decent gore that i liked there's some creepy imagery images that definitely definitely did wasn't settling um and that was definitely the case and uh but it just ultimately it was just not, not a very satisfying film and i guess maybe it's what it's trying to be but at the same time it just doesn't work because it's just either it's bad editing editing that's fucking confusing to the viewer or it's just it's just you don't give a shit. You don't give a shit what's happening. You don't care. And because there's nobody that you root for and there's nobody you care about. 
So anyway, I really don't know what to say about the film. And I know I said that twice, but I really don't know what else to say about Necromantia. Except thank you for watching my review, and I will see you guys later. See ya.